Okay, hello everyone. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Mavier's theorem, which is finding powers and roots of complex numbers. Now remember, when we first set out with this chapter, what we wanted to do is we wanted to take a look at complex numbers and how we can go ahead and perform all the operations on complex numbers. And we've shown how to do that using scalar multiplication, how to add or subtract complex numbers, and also how to multiply and divide. So this is the last part that we need to go ahead and do, is how do we go ahead and determine powers and roots of complex numbers. Now, we've already gone ahead and talked a little bit about finding powers of complex numbers because we said that if z is going to be equal to r cis theta, then if we raise that to a particular power, then we can say that this is going to be r cis theta raised to the n power, which means that this is n factors of r cis theta, Therefore, we have n r factors, which results in r to the n. And since we also have n factors of cis theta, we can use our property of multiplication of complex numbers in polar forms to say that the argument would just be n theta. Now, this is going to be true for all n being a positive integer. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example here. Say, for example, if we wanted to go ahead and take a look at 1 plus i raised to the 50th power. Now, the Cartesian solution, well, that means that we have to do 1 plus i raised to the 50th power. I'm not going to try to do FOIL on that. We could go ahead and try to use the binomial expansion, but boy, that's just going to be huge as well. But when we take a look at the polar solution of multiplying out this particular complex number, it's going to be very, very straightforward for us to go ahead and find what that product is. So say, for example, if we go z is equal to 1 plus i, then we know that z is going to be equal to the square root of 2 cis of 45 degrees. Now, z to the 50th, then, is going to be the same thing as 1 plus i raised to the 50th, which changed into its polar form is just going to be the square root of 2 cis of 45 degrees, all raised to the 50th power. Now, we know by the Mavier's theorem here, or just by the properties that we know regarding multiplication of, power, uh, multiplication of complex numbers in their polar forms, we know that this is just going to be the square root of 2 raised to the 50th power, cis of 50 times by 45 degrees. So what we come out with then is going to be 2 to the 25th power, cis of 2,250 2, degrees. Now, of course, if we can, we should go ahead and take a look at what that angle will be from 0 to 360 degrees. And if we go ahead and shave off multiples of 360 degrees, then we come out with cis of 90 degrees, which we know is to be i. So notice the nice thing now, especially if we wanted to go ahead and find the powers of complex numbers, especially powers of very large uh, the very large powers of complex numbers, then if we look at the complex number in its polar form, we can use the Mavier's theorem to very simply come out with an expression for that. Now, of course, the one thing that we need to go ahead and take a look at as well is we limited ourselves for n being an element of z positive or all positive integers. What we need to know as well is will de Maivier's theorem work for negative powers? And the answer is yes. Will it work for rational powers? In other words, if we take the root of z, and the, again, the answer is yes as well. Now, we'll go ahead and take a look at these two particular proofs in class so that we can discuss them even further. So, there's de Maivier's theorem, the last piece of the puzzle because we need to go ahead and be able to take the powers of complex numbers as well as find the roots of complex numbers and that will round off all of the operations that we need to do with complex numbers. So there you go. We'll take a look at some of these questions that you will have in class the next time that we meet. So see you later. Bye-bye.